here. Getting out of this place. Tomorrow, I hope. You may have noticed I'm not sick anymore. I noticed. <laughs> hey, listen, don't you pack your bags. They give you a clean bill of health. I don't want yeah. you coming home too soon having a relapse. I was well enough to leave yesterday. <laughs> Besides, I'll go insane if I get any more rest. Anyway, I want my old roommate back. You mean I'm uh, more fun than Miss Mills? Let's put it this way I am not madly in love with Miss Mills. But I must say, she's a very dear lady. She deserves a lot better than Hillcrest Manor Nursing Home. Oh, I can't wait to get on that story. You know, a guy he called me about last night, uh, Hugh Sharp, he's a very elusive fellow. He's horrible. Elusive? I thought you'd never heard of him. I asked around some. But you had a deadline for the paper. When did you find time? I made time, worked out a little deal with my editor. Look, if uh, Miss Mill's gonna be out for a little while, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what I dug up. She won't be back for half an hour, maybe longer. They're doing something for the circulation in her feet. Now, what on earth have you been up to? Just, uh, just some quick research. I stopped in at the DA's office, talked to a friend, made a few phone calls, and checked out one or two reliable sources. Oh, Jack, you didn't have to do that. I know. You sounded so worried when I talked to you last night. I wanted to help. Hey, what does she want to know if I got some leads? <laughs> yes, yes, tell me. <laughs> well, in the case of Mr. Sharp, I struck out. But I do have a couple of tips that you might want to consider. Number one, work on the uh, contacts in the home, Miss Mills and her friends. Keep in touch, socialize, visit, but no interrogating, no pressure. Stay loose, and the uh, heads of the home uh, won't get suspicious till it's too late. But when we visit, we keep our eyes open. Mm, which brings us to point number two. Notice the sights and the smells, but don't bring any cameras, don't take any notes. Write it all down after you leave. I guess any interview should be in the studio, hmm? Mm, unless you can come up with a uh, tremendous cover. Mm. Third and last point. <clears throat> Be nice to the aides, cleaning people, any, any members of the staff that don't have fancy titles. They're the ones who usually spend most of the time with the patients and uh, who might be angry enough to talk about what they've seen. Jack, who told you all of this? A couple of guys. Uh, particularly one old pal that uh, just wrote a series on the nursing home hearings. Oh, he's gonna send me um, a copy of the checklist that the federal and state nursing home investigators use, so uh, that should give you some idea what to look for. Oh, you're wonderful. And I love you. I think you have changed. Well, you shouldn't be surprised. Um, Considering the fact I uh, looked you right in the eye and tried to at least pronounce the word marriage. Oh, it's so exciting. What? The story. That's everything. You're getting well? Coming home. Home? Does that include my place? You bet. Knock, knock. Hi, Sam. Hi. I thought this might be a good time to stop by. be allowed to raise that baby she's insane when chloe loses her mind will melanie have to fill in please take care of parker as mother and wife you have a place in my heart whether you want it or not watch days of our lives weeknights at 6 and 11 on soapnet you know nothing about todd manning i know more about that man than you think he's dangerous this week todd's losing control everyone's against me my wife my daughter i want to protect my family but someone's getting in his way what do you want i'm here because of you Watch One Life to Live, weekdays on ABC, and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. You are you. You're also your social security number, your credit card numbers, the email in your inbox. 
you're even the equity in your home to a criminal getting his hands on just one tiny piece of you even just your name can be enough to steal your credit your money and your good name that's why you need lifelock to help protect you lifelock is the leader in proactive identity protection we aggressively patrol your identity every second of every day by actively monitoring your personal information to help protect you from identity theft before it happens Credit monitoring alone is not enough to protect your identity and only tells you after the fact, sometimes as much as 60 days later, that your identity has been stolen. By then, the damage to your credit, your good name, and your life has already been done. With LifeLock, as soon as we spot a threat to your identity within our network, our advanced LifeLock ID alert system notifies you, helping to protect your identity before you become a victim. And because no one can stop all identity theft, if the criminals do manage to steal any of what makes you, you, LifeLock is there to help make you whole again with our $1 million total service guarantee and a 24-7 support staff that will fight to restore your good name. All it takes is for the criminals to get a hold of just one piece of your personal information and they can wreak havoc on your life. Get the protection you need right now with one call to LifeLock. Call now and try LifeLock free for a full 60 days. If you're not completely satisfied, notify LifeLock and you'll never pay a cent. Order now and also get this document shredder to keep your personal documents out of the wrong hands. A $29 value free. Just mention Life 60. Call 1-800-895-3516 or go to LifeLock.com. Try LifeLock risk-free for 60 days plus get this document shredder free. Just mention Life 60. Call 1-800-895-3516 now. LifeLock service guarantee cannot be offered to residents of New York. Thank you. Sorry, I had to check your identification, Miss Coleridge, but I've got strict orders. That's all right. Who's there, Daddy? It's me. How are you? Did you have a good night? Not very. The headache's still bad? Yeah. I feel like I didn't sleep at all, but I, I know I must have. I kept listening to all those sounds in the dark, Jill. Trying to figure out what's safe, what might be dangerous. Faith, listen to me. You mustn't worry. Now, there's a policeman at that door 24 hours a day until Kenneth is arrested. Kenneth's very clever. He knows how to hide. Yeah, but Bob says he's bound to show up sooner or later. And when he does, they'll be ready for him. Till he already showed up and nobody was ready for him. He called me here. He sent me flowers. Nobody's worried about it except for me. He's, he's going to come back here, Jill. Faith, he is. I want and I have you to, to listen to me. To now listen myself. to me, Faith. Now you listen. And no matter how clever Kenneth is and how hard he tries, he cannot get into this room. Now not only the police, but the whole hospital staff are on the alert. Hey, they're all worried about you. Concerned about your welfare and your safety. Especially the people that love you. Father and myself and Roger and Pat and Bucky and all the Ryans. They didn't care then. Why should they care now? What do you mean? When I disappeared, nobody cared. How come nobody didn't come looking for me right away? Faith, we did. As soon as we realized you didn't go out to the beach house, we were frantic. I mean, everyone, everybody that knew about the anonymous calls and the poems and the, and the presents. See? We were all desperate to find you. Kenneth was leaving all these signals. He was giving me all these warnings. Nobody took them seriously. Nobody thought about my secret admirer. Nobody was frightened about that except for me. Faith, how can you say that? <sighs> Look, honey, I'm sorry. I'm sure it was terrifying being in that room. Worse than any of us can imagine. And look, of course, you were lonely and, and you were isolated. Poor thing. What? The bird. I heard him singing outside my window all last night. I think maybe there's a nest out there or something. Yeah, maybe there is. It's OK. It's OK. It's only Clem. Only? Don't you know I'm big news? <laughs> Had you. How are you doing, doctor? Well, my leg's better, I think. X-rays look good. Fractures healing nice and neat. We're all pretty happy about that. Too bad the concussion's not being so cooperative, huh? You had one bad knock on the head. How's the double vision? Hmm? It's gone. The head's pretty bad, though. 
I'd like to give you something for the pain, but... Uh, I know, I know. You, you know. can't risk covering up secondary symptoms, right? Just a few more days, and uh, then we can relax. Clem, exactly what are you looking for? Subdural hematoma. That's bleeding. The blood mass presses in on the brain, and that can cause damage. I've seen plenty of concussions without hematoma. It's just something we have good sense to look out for. Well, listen, when are you going to stop looking? Next week? Early next week. In the meantime, we keep popping in here and uh, test the reflexes. Shine lights in her eyes. Wake her up and be uh, generally annoying. <laughs> no, I'm glad you're doing it, Clem. You see, if hematoma does develop, that means it could impair one or more brain functions. I could be crippled, mute, Deaf, isn't that right, Clem? That's not going to happen. You're going to be up on your feet and back to your internship with me snarling orders very soon indeed. We're having a rough time uh, getting along without you. <laughs> we all are. So you take care until this afternoon, OK? OK. OK. Jo. I'll see you, Clem. Well, look, I, I better get back to the office, too. Everybody goes away. Now, Faith, I want you to stop that. Now, come on. We love you. And we're all going to take care of you and protect you. And I don't want you to worry. I'll see you later. <laughs> to do that? I certainly am. Especially if it means keeping you two from having another, what, fight? No, heated argument. Anyway, it's a lovely day. Hopefully my last one here, and I would like it to be pleasant. Will I spoil your day if I talk shop for a few minutes? Yeah. No. That's exactly what Jack and I were just doing. I meant about the nursing home. What else? Certain information has just come into my possession, and we are going to find it very valuable. Terrific. Jack has collected some expert advice for us. He's talked to a lot of people and found out that the best way to approach this whole Mary, nursing home business... Mary, this is our story, yours and mine. Whatever Jack is, he is not our co-worker. Thank the good Lord. Right. And you can't go discussing every move we make. Already some people may have been tipped off. Oh, come on, Crowell. I didn't give any details. I chose my sources very carefully. Sam, Jack's done a lot of legwork for us. I thought you'd be delighted. I don't mind legwork. And I don't need any helpful hints. I'm perfectly capable of analyzing approaches to this story. Nobody has to hold my hand or yours, for that matter. What's that mean? We can't accept any help? It means that we'll handle this story our own way. OK, wise guy, suppose you tell me what you have in mind. <laughs> Look, this is confidential stuff. Uh -huh. In other words, you don't have much of anything in mind. For your information, I called the Moreland Act Commission office this morning and requested transcripts of all their public hearings so that Mary and I can start reading. Now, that's what's known as doing your homework. That's what's known as wasting your time. May I make a suggestion? No. Yes. Call the commission back. Ask them for the public information only on Gilchrist Manor. That'll save you about a year of homework. You can spend the time snooping around trying to find out what goes on at the home. Of course, that's a standard shortcut, but I doubt I'll need it. And I may do better than just snooping around. Suppose I planted somebody at Gilchrist Manor as an employee. Now, she could get the real inside story. She. Forget it. Forget it! Mary landed in the hospital on your last inside story. You dragged her through a city sewer. That's her adventure for the month. Go plant yourself in Gilchrist Manor. Sam, I think somebody would probably recognize me. The councilman's sister, you know. Possibly. So maybe that wouldn't work. But we'll still do this our own way. I only hope nobody else breaks this story. I'd hate to read about it in the papers before we get it on the air. even bother being insulted by that dumb remark. It's a competitive business. Jack is hardly in competition with Channel R. I don't steal stories. I don't have to. Sam, Miss Mills will be back any minute, so let's wrap this up, huh? I promise I will read anything you give me. Good. And keep working on Miss Mills, will you, Mary? Especially about Hugh Sharp. She might let something slip. OK. I'll let you know when they're going to spring me. Great. I got my hopes up. The more I see that guy, the more I hate him. 
He did get his back up. His back up, his hopes up. He makes me sick. It's... You're a big time reporter with a big time reputation. He's just starting in the business, so he feels a little defensive. I don't care what he feels like. He had no business suggesting I steal his story. Yeah, you're right there. Soon enough. Mm -hmm. Write a beautiful column. I'll try. I love you. I love you. Seconds with Gina Tonioni. The top three things I must have on set. Hot water, uh, just sort of relaxes me and, and hydrates. Uh, mascara and lip gloss. Lips, lips, lips. Catch Gina Tonioni and One Life to Live weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. Kleenex brown <laughs> tissues are America's softest. No wonder people go out of their way to share them. Go to Kleenex.com for more fun ways to share. Kleenex tissues, softness worth sharing. These pretzel M&Ms are really good. Yeah, I know. I haven't been able to stop eating them myself. Guess that's how I ended up with this pretzel inside me. You know what they say, you are what you eat, right? You are what you eat. What a bunch of malarkey. together. They were just married. I do. Then... Brenda! All was lost. Oh. Now... Brenda wasn't in the limo. Sam was. You would extract it before it went boom. A dangerous man will do whatever it takes. I'm gonna crush that piece of garbage. To find his worst enemy. There's no reason to keep you alive. Ah! It's time... Where's my wife? For... How many more people have to die? Payback. See what happens if you dare come after my family. General Hospital. Come on, excuse me. What about this face concussion? I mean, are you really worried about complications? Well, you heard what Faith said. She was very accurate. I'll tell you, Jill, I won't breathe easy till she gets through the next couple of days. Will you excuse me? Yeah, sure. Bye, the those nurses. I, uh, already pushed it. Jack, <laughs> sorry, I didn't even see you. Yeah, you had that, uh, distant look. It used to mean that you were thinking hard. Or, uh, worrying. Yeah, well, I guess some things never change. This time I was worrying. About Faith? Yeah. Mary told me. How is she? Well, mentally, she's a wreck. And physically, I guess she's fair. I was just talking to Clem about her concussion. Is it serious? Well, it could be serious. And then again, it could heal without any complications. They just don't seem to know. I'm sorry. You feel so scared and helpless when somebody you love gets really sick. Thank you. You know, I've never heard you say anything quite that way before. Well, some things do change. <laughs> How's Mary? Feeling good, thinner, not as strong as she thinks she is. Desperate to get out of here. She'll discharge herself if they don't. <laughs> You know, it's lasting a good bit longer than I expected. Me and Mary? Mm. Yeah. Surprises me, too. Uh, it's turned into something very special. Yeah. Well, I guess there's no such thing as a casual encounter with Orion. Apparently not. Have you had lunch? No, I was just on my way to the cafeteria. Let's go to Lamb's. I have to fortify myself for a long afternoon in my typewriter, and I bet you eat at the cafeteria every day of the week. <laughs> well, it's true. I haven't been out for lunch in about a month. But look, I really don't think I should. I what? think I should just stay around just in case. Be back in an hour. Come on. All right. Mm. 
Why do I keep thinking that you've grown up? Because I uh, can uh, pour now without spilling. Let me ask you one. Since uh, when do you just come right out and say what you're thinking? Since you grew up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Frank, Mary, and in Faith's case, Pat. Wow. Once you fall in love with Orion, there's no going back. Two? To your old ways. To your old closed-up self. What was my old self years ago when uh, we were together? Oh, you were exciting and smart and fun to be with. And you took very good care of Jack Finale. Jill, I, uh, I think that may be changing. Because of Mary? Mm-hmm. I can tell you that I love her, but that doesn't say it. I'm uh, completely involved with her feelings, her thoughts, her reactions. Jack, you know, there's something else. Deep inside the riots, love. Love is a very special kind of commitment. Marriage. Yes. And once you're married, you stay married. Well, I, uh, I've uh, sort of been reevaluating marriage lately. <laughs> that is the most astounding remark I've ever heard you make. <laughs> I'm afraid I have to agree. Well, whatever happens, I hope it's good, and I wish you a lot of luck. A lot more luck than Frank and I had. Been apart for some time now. How's it going? I'm surviving. And I don't cry as much as I used to. But I guess it's so sad. But I tell myself to get up every morning and uh, get through the day without him. And sooner or later, I'll be okay. I hope I never have to go through that. I don't know if I could handle it. Well, maybe you won't have to. I mean, maybe Mary and you will live happily ever after. Could you uh, say that with a little more conviction, please? <laughs> Never mind, I'll drink to it anyway. Uh oh, thank you. Happily ever after. <laughs> Next, take a trip to the Upper West Side on Ryan's Hope. Later, spend some time in Genoa City with the Young and the Restless. Only on SoapNet. On all my children. It's about Zach. There was an explosion. No, I don't want to hear it. A broken heart turned deadly. <laughs> Gotta get her out of here to an OR. We don't stand a chance. And as she recovers, she uncovers a murder. Zach's crash might not have been an accident. What? Now she won't rest until she finds her husband's killer. Stop trying to control her life. Stay away from her. No matter where the clues lead. Something is very wrong, Griffin. I'm gonna need her to keep thinking of me as a friendly neighborhood minister. All my children. If you're a diabetic and currently trying to lose weight, please stay tuned to this important message. A market trial offer is starting now for a revolutionary breakthrough in weight loss called Glucosalin, and you are eligible to try it free for 30 days. We are looking for callers to receive a free trial, so call immediately 1-800-620-3352. If the line is busy, please keep trying. Clinical studies of the key ingredient in glucosalin have shown this ingredient to be effective in accelerating weight loss. What's even more impressive is that it also supports healthy blood sugar metabolism at the same time. And now this new formula is being released to the general public. And you're eligible to try glucosalin right now for 30 days. Finally, clinically proven weight loss and healthy blood sugar metabolism in one pill. Call immediately to find out how to receive your free 30-day trial. 1-800-620-3352. 1-800-620-3352. If the line is busy, please keep trying. She's been a friend, the mother of your children, a soulmate. Isn't it time to let that special someone know exactly how you feel? Give her the gift she always wanted. Give her a polio vaccine. It's perfect. Whatever cause you're passionate about, give it as a gift at changingthepresent.org. Dr. Tom? It's time, Erica. Choose a door. 
This is the next phase of your journey as a patient. We're all patients of his. He didn't tell you? I wanted to think that I was the only one. This is my past, my regret. Do not dwell in the past. Leo! I just want to know why it all fell apart. Do not dream of the future. Nine years from now, something awful is going to happen here. Am I dead? Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Oh my god. What if I made a mistake? I told you that I was ready. And I'm sorry, but I'm not. An original primetime drama. You get one life, and it's not about how long or short it is. It's what you do with it. Being Erica. All new, Wednesdays at 11, only on SoapNet. Of course we're Frank Ryan's family. I'm surprised my father didn't tell you. He thinks everybody in uniform knows Frank. He's just about right. Any cop in Riverside who doesn't know your brother personally knows him by reputation. Her father just left, and she was awake then. Okay, thank you. Okay. Faye? Hi, Mary. Are you up to a short visit? Yeah, I guess so. Listen, you don't have to be polite with me. I can come back later if you don't feel like talking. And I'll stay. Are you sure? Yeah. Believe it or not, I, I sort of forgotten how easy you are to talk to. I don't know. I, I just feel like I've been away for a very long time. Well, it must be awful. Trying to act like you just had a nasty accident, and now everything's going to be Jim Dandy. Mary, I'm so scared. Oh, Faith, I wish there was something I could do for you. Well, uh, why don't, why don't you open the blinds? I didn't realize how dark this room was till today. They're wide open. Oh, it just must be cloudy outside. It's probably going to rain. But turn on the light, will you? I want to cheer this place up a little bit. OK. Better? Oh, I guess so. Faith, if your eyes are bothering you, maybe I could get Doc. He could give you some drops or something. No. That just goes along with a concussion. I had double vision up until yesterday. You know, it's not the medical symptoms. They, they don't really bother me. I know I'm in a good hospital and I'm, I'm getting really good care. I just don't like being terrified of everything. I don't know how to control it. Honey, you gotta give yourself time. And you've got to remember that there are a lot of people who love you and who are trying to understand what you're going through. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. I guess you do. Me? Bucky? Pat? No. Uh, don't talk about Pat. You see, I sort of have it mixed up with Kenneth. With Kenneth? Yeah, you see, all the time I was I was down there in, in that room, Kenneth kept telling me how, how bad Pat was for me and how he was going to protect me from Pat. Now, whenever I think about Pat, I just think about being down there all alone and, and abandoned. Faith, I'm, I'm just so sorry. At least my father still cares about me. Daddy's the only one. In Port Charles, revenge is a priority, relationships are disposable, and good medical care is a necessity. Keep up with this fast-paced city with an all-new episode of General Hospital, weeknights at 10 on SoapNet.